Hello and welcome to the Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, New York Cardboard Concierge, answering your game and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Let me put my years of game playing, event organizing, and game night hosting to use for you. Tonight we are answering the very important question, what's in the box? Specifically this box, which is the board game Sorcerer from White Wizard Games. Now, straight up, I'm going to mention it right away. This is a review copy that I received at Origins from White Wizard Games. That is the only compensation I got from this. And it's up to you to decide how that affects my opinion and whether that's biased or not. Personally, I'm just going to tell it how it is. I don't think that's going to affect my decision or like or dislike of this game at all. So what we are doing here at the Cardboard Coat Check, that's your board game bag check, is we are going to look at what's inside this box, Sorcerer from White Wizard Games. Now I did get to try this game, uh, Rob from White Wizard Games did do a quick demo of the game with me, but I have not played a full game. I obviously haven't played this copy, it's still in train craft. Uh, we're going to go through this quick. What I do know of the game is to me, it's the latest... Magic the Gathering inspired dueling wizard battle game or magic battle game from White Wizard. Um, White Wizard was founded by pro tournament players from Magic, so it makes sense that they would try to improve on the game they love. Uh, this mashes in something that I've only ever seen in Smash Up, where you are going to take different decks. You're going to pick from three different types of decks, and you're going to mash them together to make your play deck, which I thought was really cool. So Sorcerer is for two to four players. Uh, they call it a dark fantasy game, so that is something that's very important to note. This game is not for kids. Uh, the iconography, not the iconography, the artwork on this is um, definitely, I wouldn't say R-rated, but at least PG-13 rated. Uh, it is horror-themed, there are demons, there is some nasty stuff, so this isn't one for kids. Uh, the game does come with 170 cards. It says it note, combines the best elements of strategy card games and tactical board game to create a whole new play experience. Uh, so you're going to combine a character deck, a lineage deck, and a domain deck. So you're picking three different decks, and there's four of each of those in the game. So you've got, got a lot of variety there between the different possible combinations. I'm not going to do the math. It's been way too long since I took permutations and combinations in university. Uh, and you are going to form your Grimoire, which is your deck, and you're going to have Dark Magic Evil Minions. And you're going to play on trying to win two of three battle zones, at least in the two-player game. But anyway, you can probably hear more about the game later. Once I play it, I'll be doing a full review. What we want to know now, though, is what's in this box. So all I have here is an X-Acto blade. I'm just going to carefully make sure I don't damage the box at all while removing the shrink wrap. It's nice to see is there's a little tab here, which will make it easier to open once I do get the shrink wrap off, which, of course, I'm going to have a hard time with. There we go. Just didn't want to pull. Now I can show off the box a little better. Oh, I like that. Some of it's uh, glossy. I don't know if we can see that, if I can catch that on the video. Yeah, you can see it a bit there. There's some nice glossy elements added to that box cover. That's cool. It's nice art inside. Quick shot of the back. And again, nice bonus here. There's tabs to actually grab the box. Look at that. That's so much easier than opening some of these things. All right. Oh, that's pretty. All right, it's only the inside of the box. I'm sorry, that's a nice touch. I like it. I dig it. I'm gonna move this aside. I am going to move my bell out of the way so I can put this down. So, so far we have rule book on the top. We have lots of little counters. Try to make sure we don't have any glare here. I'm just going to take these sheets off one at a time. More counters, tokens. I know some of these are for representing your character. There's a spot to... Um, these are dividers for storing. Nice to see. I didn't know those were in here. Always good to see dividers when you get a card game. Here you have one of the player boards, which is actually upside down at this point. I'll show these off better once I pull them out. You're obvious. Oh, wow. These are thick. Okay. I said I did a demo of this, but that is a nice board. Like, I don't know. Thick's not the right word. Stiff. Hard. Um, not flimsy. Also two-sided. Or left and right handed, I'm guessing. Just different themed on each side. So here's a player board. Very glossy. I apologize for any of the camera reflection there. No, well, they're all the same. I'm not sure what the two sided's for. Again, I did a quick demo of this. I haven't played the game in full. Uh, you do have four of these because the game does play four players. I'm not going to bother showing you the other ones because there is on. 
fairly nice looking insert here. It's definitely lots of room for cards. So I'm going to assume any expansions you pick up are going to fit in here fine. Uh, the, I don't know what it is, collectible card games or non-collectible card games, like these foam blocks for dividing things up. We got some beads, some cubes, and we got some more stuff over here. So I'm going to put this down and pull some of this out. Now, nah, let's see. We can do it from here. So right here are your location cards. So these are the locations you're going to fight over. You have four of them in here. You have the, the side when you're fighting for it, and then the side when someone's actually won it. Each location has damage. You have to damage the location of spots. Uh, got to say, really, really nice art. I check that out. I'm slightly remember, reminded of Warhammer, Realm of Chaos. Note when it's defeated, the site's like on fire and destroyed. Uh, the setting is Victorian, but Rob was very clear to point out not steampunk. Because when I hear Victorian, I immediately think steampunk nowadays. This is not steampunk. More um, by Gaslight. Again, really evocative, really nice art. You are playing the bad guys in this game. You are like demonologists summoning demons, fighting over these territories. You're not the good guys. Again, really nice quality. I, I don't know how to express that. But these, the way they're coded, really nice. Like This is not just cardboard. Also note, I didn't have to punch these. So there's no edges. The edges are nice and black too. I love it. Looks good. Looks really good. All right, so we have some beads. This gives me um, flashbacks to my Magic the Gathering days because it's how we used to track life. Uh, just glass beads for tracking various things. Top of my head, I know you got to track the health of your character, your mana level, your number of actions. I think one of these is going to be to track your mana, or sorry, whatever your, your magic resource is called, and the other is going to track your number of actions. You have five actions every round. Uh, we have wooden cubes. These are for tracking the damage on the locations. That one I remember off the top of my head. So wooden cubes, you know, pretty standard board game component here. Then we have dice. So this is a dice-based card game. Um, both similar to and not at all similar to Ashes. in the fact that you are going to roll dice for your mana, but instead... Okay, I'm probably going to get this wrong. Remember, this is an unboxing, not a rule teach. Uh, each turn, you can decide how much mana you get. It's either you take three or four. I don't remember the number, but you can take like four. Or you can roll this, D8, to determine how much mana each player gets. Which I thought was a really interesting mechanic. Because if you don't need mana and your opponent does, you might want to roll and roll really low. Or if you know you need exactly five, maybe it's worth taking that chance to roll. Or if you know your opponent needs five, why not just take four and instead of rolling on the die? And I got to say, I dig this D8. Those are huge numbers for D8. And there it goes. My apologies. Right on the mic, too. All right. Really nice D8. I may steal this for D&D. &D. Then we have a bunch of other dice for combat. Um, these remind me of Hero Quest. They're, they're custom dice. So you have blank and blank. Then you have a star. And there should be one more star. Nope, just one star. Then two demon heads. Or sorry, a demon head and a demon head. And then a side with two demon heads. These are used when your minions are fighting each other. You're going to roll. So say your attack's three, you're going to roll three dice. And every demon head's a hit. The stars are like potential crits. Different cards are going to do different things if you have it. So you got seven of these. They're nice. Those are nice. Those are actually etched, which is nice. So even if the paint rubs off, you're going to be able to see these. I don't know if I can get that in the camera, but even that's etched. That is not screen printed. Nice touch. Bonus points right there. Uh, these I'm not going to bother putting back into a baggie. All right, now we have cards because, well, it's a card game, so we're going to have lots of cards. These do have your, um, you know, cigarette pack style thing to open them up, but I tend to never try to use those. They always are mixed bag, whether they work or not. I just use an X-Acto blade. Be careful not to catch the cards. So being a card driven game, this is going to be the big thing. Uh, first card on top is going to give you a really idea of the creepy art in this game. Uh, like I said, not for kids, though this guy's really cool looking. My kids would probably dig that guy. Or this cat. They'd love this cat. But still, you're going to find some more disturbing art. There we go. By the fourth one in, you probably don't want your kids playing with that. But you never know. When I was 13 years old, I was into Warhammer Realm of Chaos stuff, and Chaos Demons were my bag. So it's all my thing. So I'm not going to show off every card here. I'm just going to show off a few of them. 
Um, top of my head, I'm not sure exactly how you determine how to split them up. I think it's the symbol in this corner. But each of these become different decks. Yes, yeah, so like these cards all have the same symbol. So I think this is one type. And the symbol's right over there. And then here's another one that shows a demon face. So I'm going to get a bunch of those. I was going to say that deck was pretty small, but it's probably one of the ones that split. Yeah, so there's another one of the decks. So this is one deck that you would mash with two other ones to make your full deck. Again, art is fantastic. Uh, words are easy to read. Uh, special abilities are explained right on the card. I don't know if you can see that ongoing down at the bottom. I don't know if it's readable. All the info's here. So you do have keywords, but you don't have to look up what they mean. That's a bonus. Um, costs are easy to see. Health and damage are right on the cards. Yeah, I actually used this deck when I played the demo. So, again, I love the art. Very cool art. But, like I said, not quite for kids. Probably not what you want to play with your, your kids. So, that's one deck of cards. We got another. I'm not going to waste too long going through all the cards because I'm sure you could see them online for one. They all look just as nice. There is um, not a lot of flavor text. Like, to be honest, I don't think there's any. So, no flavor text. So, unlike, say, Magic or one of those, there is no flavor text on these cards. So the other thing is each deck you take is going to give you a special ability. So here's one of the character deck types. So if you take this deck, you are now playing Miselda, whose action is exhaust this skill card to exhaust a non-legend enemy minion with cost four of less. If there's not one to exhaust, gain three energy. So it's energy, not mana. So this lets you basically tap a non-unique minion or gain three energy, and that's her action, and it could be one of your five actions. Whereas if I was instead playing Aziris, which is one of the other four characters, his action is exhaust this skill card to search your Gwimwar, which is your deck, for a non-curse attachment, which is like an enchantment, and play it by the cost minus one. So this character is going to be all about buffing all your monsters. So these are the different decks you have. So there's four different characters, the four different lineages. So the characters... Lineages is like the Demonologist, the Necromancer, the Bloodlord, and the Animist. And then the last one is your domain. So it's like where you own. So example domains are of the Outcast Sanctuary. And what you do is you pick all three and then you can read it. So this kind of reminded me of Numenera. So I could be playing <laughs> Erespes, the Necromancer of the Screaming Coast. So then I would take these three decks, like these are the just the covers, and I would mash those together, shuffle them up to make my, my deck. Really cool concept for a, one of these magic dueling games. And then, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you're fighting over these. And you're trying to do damage to the locations, not the other player. Very cool looking. So let's quickly go through. So these are the character cards, the character and grimoire cards. They're very different backs, so you can see them better. You can tell them apart a lot easier. These don't go in your deck. These give you unique abilities, makes the game asymmetric. Everyone who watches the show and the podcast knows I love asymmetric games. Again, I'm not going to show off all the cards, but again, the symbol determines what decks it's in, and you just match these up. Creepy cards, easy to read. Someone's all about bugs and spiders. All right, we'll do one more from this pile. More creepy, undead-looking things. All right. So that's two decks of cards. You do get one more deck. So a significant number of cards in this box. I read it off the back. I think it was 170. I said it at the top of the video. You can scroll back to look. Scroll back. You scroll back on video. I don't know if you can scroll back on video. Scroll is probably not the right word. All right. Here we get to see one of the enhancements. So one of the things to tell the difference is the title of the cards on the side. So that's a quick way to be able to tell it's an enhancement. It also means when you stack the cards, you can do that, which is pretty cool. Well, um, holding that up badly. And of course, I have an enhancement on enhancement. But let's put these two enhancements on a thing. Here. Here's a better example of something enhanced. I like it. I like the way the cards lay out there. It's well done. Good job, white wizard. So a bunch more cards. This one's got lots of people in it, lots of characters, lots of people with lots of people is probably the wrong word. Um, character. Again, art is fantastic. Really dig the art. Just a little dark for kids, potentially. So that's it. Um, what is shocking is they obviously expect a lot of expansion. 
So I'm going to put all these decks together just to show off how many expansions they expect you to get with this game eventually. Because here's this. Here's the box. That's it. Oh, and then they fell over. So I'm going to use the foam. Oh, this is why I should do videos at a table. There we go. That 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 is what you get in the core box. So lots of room for expansions. Obviously, it's coming. Um, definitely room for sleeve cards. I know people care about that. I personally play unprotected. Lots of room for expansions in the core box, which is a nice touch. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That is Sorcerer from White Wizard Games. What you get in the box, really nice dice. You got some glass beads. I'm guessing this is, I'll have to figure out what goes where. Yeah, here's a spot for the dice. Spot for the dice, go right up here. Oh, they fit in nice, actually. There you go, spot for the dice. Not quite sure what goes there. The beads, maybe? I don't know, you got beads, you got cubes. You got all those tokens I still have to punch. So comes with a box insert. Bonus. Like I like Bo Broken Token and I like those companies. Oh, there I fair what goes there. D8. Bang. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much it. Put the location cards back in. Note there are four. Uh, normally you're playing for vying for two of them. That might probably for more multiplayer rules. Extremely impressed by the quality of these boards. Like these, I don't know. I, they're thick. Like they're... Thick is the wrong word because the diameter isn't that thick, but they're they're solid. Whatever they are made of is a step above most of what you see for player boards. They're definitely not paper like some companies out there. So we're putting all this back in. Now left, let's take a quick look at the rule book. It's rather large, oversized, which is nice because you know what? I get sick of reading little pamphlets. I haven't even looked at this. Hey, it tells you where everything goes. Bonus. I like that. <laughs> That's a nice touch, to be honest. I do appreciate it. Uh, nice big text. Thank you, White Wizard. I am getting old. So here's a list of the decks that come in the base game. So those are your decks. And again, you're going to pick one character, one domain, and one lineage. Mash them together and make your grimoire or your spell deck. Um, some of the stuff in the game that's well done that I like from playing the demo is where you you can summon minions on any of the zones you're fighting on but you can only cast your spells your sorceries in the spot where your character is and you have a little token that represents where you are so that adds a very board game element to this card game uh really clear rules wow i'm really impressed by the size and the font the size of the text that's nice and easy on the eyes something you don't see often now and then lots and lots of of um examples lots of art you got minions, sorceries, enchantments, everything you'd expect in a dueling card game. I gotta say, I love White Wizard. I'm a bit of a fanboy. Um, first time I ever went to Origins, 2014, 2014, 2015. And one of the first games I played was Star Realms. And it was the second game I bought at the con. That was one I had to bring home. So this is an example of a two-player setup. So showing the two battle zones in the middle, the player boards, and then your three decks that are going to be, or your three abilities and your deck. So it doesn't look like it takes up a lot of table space. Uh, not a lot to show you here. Lots of examples, game turns, timing rules, buried, anthropod counters. So a bunch of the counters are going to be based on the different characters. There are multiplayer rules, two different team game rules. And as I mentioned, there's going to be room for expansion. Here is your ad for the expansions, as well as the other great games that White Wizard Games makes. So there we go. That is Sorcerer from White Wizard Games. Really looking forward to playing this. I did do a demo. I was impressed by the demo. I got to say, this looked good. At Origins, this was one of the hot games. This is one of the everyone. There was a lot of buzz for this. Uh, it did help that White Wizard was one of the premier sponsors, so their name was everywhere. But not only that, the game looks really good. Um, I am extremely impressed by the quality. Those boards, those are nice. Um, the gloss is nice. The dice being actually etched instead of silk screened. Big bonus points there. And big, clear, large font rule book. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about this. Before the tabletop bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop. I am your cardboard concierge. You can find me streaming on Twitch every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern with my co-host, Sean. There we answer your gaming and game night questions. Also, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com.
and you head over to our blog where you can see the answers to your gaming and game night questions as well as other stuff like reviews, news. Um, plus, I've got a bunch of master lists where I'm trying to find every tabletop podcast out there, every tabletop streamer, and just making an accessible list where everyone can find more awesome gaming content. If you dig the content you're watching right now and you appreciate the work that goes into this, I would appreciate if you head over to tabletop bellhop or sorry, patreon.com forward slash tabletop bellhop and consider tipping the bellhop. For tabletop bellhop, I am Mo. Good night and game on.